Hello, and welcome to Cinema Realness, Side Escape's movie theme show. My name is Maddie Atley, and each week on Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube, me and a friend will discuss a random movie topic. This week, I'm joined by my good friend, Lindsay Dillon. Say hello. Hi. Hello. 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 <laughs> and this week, we'll be talking about horror films. Which I I'm a big scaredy cat, so I don't typically watch <laughs> those kinds of movies. But I've been uh, tr- trying to kind of get into them because I know like people love them, and I've been finding they have like a lot of cool meanings behind like the horror aspect of it. Um, but I <laughs> I'm still too scared to watch a lot of them. <laughs> um, but Lindsay is a huge fan of them. So I wanted to kind of pick your brain about what you like about it. What, like, what are your favorite themes, directors, Mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I guess give me like a little background. Like, why do you like horror movies so much? What is so Uh, appealing? Oh, man. I think, I think I like horror movies for the same reason that I like fantasy and otherworldly things in general. And that it's, it's kind of a way to tell stories about human experiences, but through another lens. And that I feel like that lens can make things more like it's a way to access those stories or emotions or whatever it is in a way Uh that's not so direct. So essentially, it's it's a way to tell stories about human experiences, but through the lens of the imaginary. Um, And that's that's what I love about fantasy. It's what I love about sci-fi. Um, it's part of my artist statement. Like that's why, that's how much I love it is just being able to tell stories through another lens. And the fact that that lens can either like, like as a, as a horror movie or fantasy, whatever viewer, you can watch that movie and just get out of it kind of whatever you want. Like if you're looking for something more, you can, Mm -hmm. you can see that. But if you're just watching a movie about robots versus aliens, then cool, you're just watching a movie about robots. Yeah. And aliens, that's <laughs> totally fine. Uh-huh. Um, I think the other thing I like about horror as well is that it's it seems like another iteration of uh, like our tendency as humans to tell stories. Like it's another mm-hmm. iteration of folklore. It's another iteration of mythology. And um, like, I personally find it really interesting to like try and trace back how we've come to form our associations with horror that we do oh. like where does the vampire like myth yes. kind of start um uh-huh. you know, why do we why do we think about tarot cards as being this like mysterious like occult thing mm-hmm. when at least from what i remember from what little research i've done it started out as just like a card game so really I, yeah yeah i um, i had no idea yeah i i did and again like i like I feel I feel kind of bad because I feel like I'm like okay I need to like check my sources because it's been a while <laughs> since I did this project but yeah when I was in college I did a uh, research project on uh, tarot cards and um, yeah it started out like as a as just a game and then really? I can't remember when it started um, having like occult associations but mm-hmm. eventually it kind of became tied with um, Romani like caravans mm-hmm. and like uh, the uh, like it got connected with spiritualism and like the interest in um, like Egyptology when that was like first a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, it's like, so tracing back the, the through lines and like mm-hmm. how we have ended up with the associations with horror that we have today is just, I find personally fascinating. Yeah. That I'm in now after how yeah. you described it. I was like, Oh my God. Like it's like a history lesson. I'm such a history nerd. I'm like, I want to know oh. where all these things come from. Oh That's my God. So interesting. It is yeah. fascinating. Like no joke for in like preparing for this interview. I brought out my, this book that I read a while back. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah, show, show it on it. the camera. So it's called on Very monsters. Nice. Um, and just for the audio, I'll read it. It's on monsters an unnatural history of our worst feared fears by Stephen T. Ozma. Um, and anyway, it's basically a history of like Western monster mythology. And it is fascinating. super fascinating. Like it wow. goes, it starts with like how Aristotle describes like monsters and ends up with like how we define like sociological monsters like terrorists and like serial killers. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to borrow that book after. Oh, That's oh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. I will be happy to lend it to you. You'll just have oh, to mind all of the the you know fervent notes that I took in the margins. That's fine. <laughs> that makes it more interesting, honestly. Okay, okay. That is so cool. 
Yeah. Wow. Well, that's, yeah. you have me sold on like look, learning more about scary movies and stuff because before <laughs> I was just like such a surface level thing, but that, that's really <laughs> interesting. I like that like kind of background in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So knowing all of that, what is your favorite kind of horror movie? I would say probably in general, it would be supernatural horror. So um, things that have to do with ghosts, spirits, um, if they're probably like secondary to that, I would say would be like, like sci-fi horror. So things that aren't necessarily supernatural, but still have to do with monsters. Okay. Um, and I, I will say like, part of why I I didn't really think of myself as like a horror movie fan for a really long time Mm -hmm. was because I thought that horror was just like like Saw, Night of the Living Dead, uh like all these like really gory films that Uh were just so not my cup of tea. Yeah, not your Um, thing. Yeah, yeah, not so much. So, uh, mm-hmm. so I guess for 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 anybody listening, if you like, you know, just because you don't like super gory movies doesn't mean that you're not like a real horror movie fan. Because I feel like there's a lot of uh, <laughs> expectations yeah. that go along with that. But uh, but yeah, right. I love I love supernatural horror again, both for its ability to tell stories about you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess fundamentally, it's kind of about our our like grappling with our immortality because it's dealing Mm. with questions of like the afterlife Mm -hmm. and like things that are beyond beyond our world um and that can link in with religion which is like a whole other thing oh Um, yeah that's a whole other beast oh (laughs) yes yes it truly is yeah so so that's my that's my favorite kind of uh of horror movie is like supernatural supernatural thriller and then Mm -hmm. second to that is like sci-fi and like monster movies yeah, that makes sense because I personally like growing up, I always like I hated like Saw and all that stuff, which is why yeah. like I kind of like stayed away from this genre. Is like I don't like seeing that or like the human centipede. Like oh. I don't really get <laughs> why. And I had a roommate and like, a good friend who like loves that movie, and I'm just like, no, I can't. Like this, the concept to me is terrifying and just like unnecessary. But like when mm-hmm. I started kind of exploring, like it actually probably started with like Get Out which is very much like it's a thriller, but it's like a social commentary, which is kind of when I started like looking at scary movies again, like I kept finding that theme. And that's what's kind of like sparked my interest again. It's like, I want to get past that, like me being scared to like learn (laughs) that lesson because I think I would enjoy movies, uh, scary movies more, like just like kind of focusing on that. Yeah. Well, it's nice to be able to know like what you're looking for too. Cause again, there, there is, so much out there and like that's like I feel like it's not to say that like there isn't room for movies like The Human Centipede because (laughs) you know I mean like this is kind of dipping a little bit back in like into like the history and like psychology but like when I was reading that book uh they were talking about uh you know those kind of like torture porn movies being a way of dealing with like Freudian aggression and oh um, why didn't even think about that oh my god yeah yeah what? it's like that that to me again like I will probably never watch the human centipede or saw just because I personally don't like the physical experience that like even thinking yeah. about watching that gives me no but yeah. uh but in terms of like the the theories around it it can be fascinating and like especially when you think about like you know body horror as like oh we are just you know meat suits in a certain way and like being reminded <laughs> of our materiality can be you know I feel like that's what those movies are kind of about um that makes a lot of sense yeah so well, I don't know I so have I guess, another I, I, I like a new respect for human centipede that way wow okay <laughs> I am learning so much right now it's, it's cool okay last last little like nerdy bit of me yeah, yeah. but like okay so with with saw when I kind of learned like I had friends who watched it and who loved mm-hmm. it when they were telling me like what that is kind of about like, to me, I remember, like, hearing that and thinking, oh, my God, it's kind of, it's a little bit like Dante's Inferno, because the way that the, um, the way that the punishment is meted out is that same style, where it's, like, the kind, like, what is, I think, uh, the one example I remember hearing about is, like, in Saw, whichever one it is, someone who was, a, who uh, suffered from drug addiction um, mm-hmm. had to, like, swim through a pile of needles, and in Dante's Inferno, <laughs> There's an example of like someone who someone who was like a clergy member who had who had like been basically like embezzling and like stealing money through his mm-hmm. position as a clergyman in in Dante's Inferno. He has like gold, molten gold being like permanently like oh drained gosh. down his throat. So it's kind of like that punishment fits the crime type of thing. 
So again, like in that nerdy, like historical sense, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, maybe there's like a through line there. And that's interesting. So wow. anyway, that, no, but, that's so fascinating. Yeah. Wow. I think, I think it's really cool. Perspective. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, next question. I feel like it's a pretty obvious one. Like what are your mm. top three favorite horror movies? Uh, I actually had a really hard time picking these really? out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because like, because I have some of some of my like favorites, or some that I would still kind of consider favorites, are like mm-hmm. they're my favorites because they like are are part of what got me into the genre, and they were my favorites oh. when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, okay, You're all good. but I have I have my list here because I can. Oh had, my like, god, that's a I long think list. It. It's there's a lot. There's a How lot. How many like, are on your list? Oh my god, I think there's like forty or something like that. But these are just like movies that I could think of like okay like what are horror movies that I've watched that I can like remember and that made an impression on me and so I just wrote I wrote them down so the Babadook uh the witch and uh oh my goodness I'm spacing out oh and uh Pan's Labyrinth I almost oh, forgot about Pan's Labyrinth I do like, love, I love Pan's Labyrinth it's a great one yeah so so good mm-hmm. um okay so the Babadook <clears throat> I really like because it is it feels like a like an I don't know if allegory would be the right word but it's essentially like a it's a story about grief and Mm -hmm. I first watched the movie like I think it was a year or two years after my sister had passed away so that was like really hitting home in a way that I couldn't have expected in any other situation um so and it was just it was it had this way of creating a really unsettling sort of environment in a way that wasn't really really explicit so Mm -hmm. like the the as the tension kind of rises through the movie it's just it's this there's a general sense of unease and then there are these supernatural events that kind of happen throughout and there's a I think you could read the movie as being a psychological horror as in you know none of the things that are happening are actually happening it's just this woman kind of going a little bit crazy um mm-hmm. but since I, I love monsters I kind of like reading it as no these things really are happening and ah. it this monster is just kind of a, a like a, a a placeholder for like the experience of of, of grief and depression mm-hmm. so so I love that oh. um the witch I love because oh my gosh why do I love it? it's so good again it's another like very subtly constructed story like mm-hmm. um well I guess well subtle in some ways like um it it's not like there's this monster creeping through the woods and you see it all the time but you know from the beginning that oh there is an evil witch in the woods okay. but but how like what you I guess this is a little bit of a spoiler alert alert um <laughs> but basically what she what she what this witch and Satan are trying to do is literally bringing this this one young woman who has moved who has been kind of um exiled from their early New England community to go live like in the woods basically um mm-hmm. these witches are trying to get her to be basically renounce herself and her religion and become a witch and serve Satan. Um, But again, it's, it's it, the way that things get worse and worse for her happen very, very gradually. And in ways that are Mm. sometimes really obviously supernatural and other ways aren't. Um, But it really draws from the, the stories about um, or like the historical stories about like what, which trials were kind of like and what experiences mm. of possession were recorded to be. Um, mm-hmm. From what I remember, actually, the uh, the director who was, I had to write this down because I couldn't actually remember, <laughs> um, Robert Eggers or Eagers. Um, okay. He's the one who did Lighthouse, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So he actually, um, like, drew a lot of the dialogue from historical documents. So the way oh, wow. that the, the actors speak, everything is like not like standard English. It's like kind of like oh, older, older yeah. styles of speech. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah. And I also, again, liked that it wasn't necessarily a psychological horror where this woman mm-hmm. isn't actually crazy. It's like, no, by the end, you full blown, like, you yeah. know that she's a witch and she's like wow. levitating in the forest with other witches. It's, it's, it's amazing. Like the last three minutes of the movie are like 
feel feel like this confirmation of like okay no this is like shit's going down this is real and I wow. love I love the way that that happens um, oh, okay yeah I feel like um I feel like hereditary kind of does that same thing mm. where it kind of toes this line between like okay are the people like actually going crazy or are the supernatural things really happening mm. and there's just enough evidence that it's like okay no these things really are happening yeah. and then at the end your suspicions are kind of confirmed confirmed yeah like you know yeah. without a doubt this is a supernatural thing that's happening okay so interesting oh yes it's okay so good <laughs> so okay. good um and pan's labyrinth you said yes yes so pan's mm-hmm. labyrinth i feel like oh man i think that was the first experience that i had with fantasy with like dark fantasy mm-hmm. um and I, I think that movie came out when i was in high school and just kind of beginning to realize that I wanted to be become an artist. Mm-hmm. And uh, I ran into this more a little bit later when I was in college, but there's this kind of association that I, I, I guess I experienced where it's like, oh, if it's like fantasy, it's like fairies and dragons and it's cute and it's like uh-huh. unthreatening. Um, uh-huh. And Pan's Labyrinth just completely turned that on its head. Oh, like, yeah, e- definitely. Yeah. 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 Oh it's my the god! Exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like oh. even the, even the fawn who's like supposed to be on Ophelia's side is like, you're never really sure. No. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's like a point in time where you're like, this guy's definitely like using her. Like, you know. <sighs> like, it, but the oh, okay. It's, yeah. It's really yeah. Good. That's someone who doesn't like scary movies. Like that is definitely a good one to kind of I feel like get yourself into it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I I agree. I agree. Yeah. And um, Guillermo del Toro has, uh, he has this uh, book where he talks a little bit about like more the, like the historical significance and the, like, again, more of like a political message with what was happening with the, with the war. Right. Mm-hmm. And anyway, he goes, he goes into more detail than I could ever go into. Yeah, <laughs> that's another, that's another really good one. Oh, I'm glad that you, yeah. that you liked Pan's Labyrinth. Cause I, did, I, I loved it. That it's like a good intro. Yeah, yeah, I actually re I had watched it in college and a, a really long time ago. So, and I remember liking it, but I didn't really remember it. And mm-hmm. then I rewatched it at the start of quarantine with my sister. Oh, and it nice. is, is I remember I was like, oh, this is really good. I forgot how uh, violent it is, though. Yeah, yeah. I I remember reading one of the things that Guillermo del Toro said about that is he wanted the spikes of violence to kind of reflect the extremes that you experience like scary things in childhood because the story is kind of told through a young woman yeah or young girl I should say um yeah but it's it's true like I when I rewatched that movie um I think if again for the first time like since I had seen it in high school uh when I was in college I was like oh my god like the scene with the bottle where he like crushes that guy's face in I was like whoa like I it's intense really really intense yeah mm-hmm. that yeah. makes so much sense though because I remember experiencing like fear as a kid like to such like a like a debilitating degree like I remember <laughs> yeah. when I was scared I was like I was really scared where yeah. but it was always about something like kind of absurd like those monsters right like there's a monster <laughs> in my closet where like there is obviously no monster in my closet but yeah you know, as a kid you just like you're certain you're like there and like that's when you call your parents and your parents yep. get annoyed because it's like obviously there's no monster. But, <laughs> but as a kid, like you don't, yeah. you don't know that. Like it's so and, real. It's it. You really think you're just like this is really what's gonna happen and like I'm gonna die. Like I remember thinking yeah. as a kid, like the monster's gonna get me and kill me. Like that's oh my god, that's what's on the line right now. <laughs> I don't even think, like, when I was younger, I don't even remember, like, even having a concept of, like, oh, I'll die and, like, what that would mean. I was just, like, scared. Like, my brain didn't even go to, like, the dying party. It was just, like, the, this is really scary because it's a monster and it's going to, like, attack me. But I didn't even, like, think about what that next step would yeah. even mean. I guess but... that makes sense. I used to be, and apparently I remember learning about this. I think it was on War actually, that this oh. was, like, a real thing. I think it was in Japan. But I didn't, as a kid, I didn't know it. But I used to be scared of going to the bathroom and when you'd flush the toilet, like there'd be something that would reach up and grab <gasps> you and like take you with it. And I remember oh. that being like a real thing I was scared about. And then like, you know, X amount, like 10, 15 years later, I find that like, that's an actual monster in like another country it was like, I don't know if it's necessarily oh. obviously like a toilet because they didn't have like the ingenuity back then, but it was something yeah. like your dump a bucket or something yeah if you didn't yeah. do something it would come and grab you oh and my god like, oh my god it's real <laughs> <laughs> oh 
<laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, dude, that's like that's another thing that's so interesting is that like like from one from one country one like a world apart like certain mm-hmm. monsters have just like popped up with like remarkable yeah. similarities like i mean how many different cultures have iterations of a blood sucking creature exactly you know it's like that's very common it's yeah. so interesting it like goes into like the human conscious like a lot of psychology mm-hmm. talks about there's like that uh everyone shares every human shares like a, a conscious uh but they're not always aware of it but sometimes they tap into it mm-hmm. and it's like kind of like where that comes from or like sometimes i think about like i feel like there's a in every like culture's food there's always some kind of noodle like there's oh. like there's like those kind of staples that like maybe like you know there's obviously a ver- big variations of it but like oh yeah there always seems to be like something like a noodle based something or like a rice based something that seems to be like you if you go across cultures like you find it there yeah it's just like but they like think about like when they were making their food like they originally weren't like coming into frequent contact with each other mm-hmm. and then eventually they did and you know that's yeah. But it's just interesting. It's and like, then we oh. get delicious, delicious food from yes. all over the world. <laughs> from all over the world. <laughs> oh, my God. Now I'm hungry. You did it. You did oh, it. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. 